Project. I'm the program manager for the Oakland Shoreline Leadership Academy. Thank you all for coming on this glorious day. We're here to celebrate the efforts of our participants of the Oakland Shoreline Leadership Academy. Uh, many of you have been supporting us through this whole process, and so we're proud to be able to present the presentations today, the culmination of our work. Uh, I wanted to start with a land acknowledgement and a I was telling Veronica Ramirez, our communication coordinator, that I was a little nervous doing the land acknowledgement because I feel like maybe I don't know enough about the Ohlone people in order to talk about them. But she was saying that it's enough just to like, know that you need to do the land acknowledgement. So I do know that we are on unceded Chicheno Ohlone land. And I know that as a resident of Oakland, I inadvertently uh, benefit from the genocide and oppression of the Ohlone people. I know that the descendants of the Ohlone people are alive and well today, and they have organized under the Segorite Land Trust, who's been one of the supporters of the Oakland Shoreline Leadership Academy. And if you would like to help to support them, you can do that by donating the Shumi land tax to them on their website, which is segorite-landtrust.org. So the Ohlone people were some of the first frontline communities dealing with the, the problems of colonialism and imperialism. And that problem has kind of continued on today to where people who are facing the front lines of sea level rise, shoreline toxins, are often left out of the conversations about how to fix those problems. That's why we created the Shoreline Leadership Academy, so we could find those three people who are interested in being a part of the solution and get them trained up in such a way that they can be viable participants in the planning process. The participants of the Open Shoreline Leadership Academy have undergone a rigorous six month process where they have learned from the experts in the field all about all things related to the shoreline. So they've learned about sea level rise from the Bay Coast Conservation Development Commission they learned about toxins on the shoreline from the Department of Toxic Substance Control. They learned about a myriad of issues from the highest experts in the land. Uh, they also have undergone instructions on how to be planners from our, our expert resident planners and curriculum trainers, Keita Price and Prescott Ravis. And what you're gonna see today is the culmination of their efforts. What we have seen as part of this process is that members of frontline com communities want to be a part of the process. And if we give them the opportunities and the privilege of getting uh, access to that information, they can be viable partic participants. You're gonna see about 10 presentations today. Um, we're all very proud of the work that they've done and we want to see all these presentations come to fruition. So when you're looking today, don't think about this as the end of something. This is actually the beginning. We want to see all of these projects implemented. So many of you who have supported today, we're going to be asking for your continued support. Uh, when you see these presentations, we're going to be looking for partnerships and, of course, the, the, the wonderful funds. So each of these presentations has a budget attached to them, and the budget represents the, the money that it will take in order for the participants to continue out these presentations. So if you know funders, if you are a funder, please afterwards come and talk to uh, one of the participants. And now I'm gonna hand it off to our curriculum trainers who are gonna be our MCs for today, Keita Price and Prescott Rivas. Hey, what's up everybody, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? You know, hey, what's up today? We've been in the mud, you know, through the pandemic and everything, you know, all this. Good stuff done with these wonderful participants. We're really excited today to share what we have. Again, I'm Keita Price, and I'm here working with the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project as a curriculum trainer with the, we call it OSLA, OSLA 21. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Prescott Rebus. I'm also one of the trainers for OSLA. 
Um, I just want to quickly say it's been an absolute pleasure working with not only the uh, cohort that's gone along, but with all the partner organizations. We really thank you for being true partners and collaborators through this process and creating this wonderful learning experience for all these um, residents of Oakland. And to go ahead and kind of start moving forward on the presentations for today, uh, first we want to acknowledge that we have uh, Linda Tong here today, who is a project development uh, analyst at California State Coastal Conservancy and the San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority. And Linda's going to give us a little word, but I'm also going to uh, give a little background of who Linda is and all the great work that she's done. Linda Tong works for a state agency that funds and supports coastal resource protection and public access to coast, California coast. She also staffs a regional agency that does similar work along the shorelines of the Bay Area. In these roles, she gets to work on the intersection of conservation, government, uh, and communities, which is exactly what we're trying to do, is to build that relationship. Prior to joining the Coastal Conservancy um, and the SF Bay Restoration Authority, Linda worked in a, in a STEM and college access program in San Francisco. Linda is a proud graduate from UC San Diego with a, a, a Bachelor of Science and a Master in Science in, in Biology. Her identity as a Chinese American and first generation college student has shaped her experiences in pursuing a career in the environment field. And her interest is advancing equity through her work. And so I give you Linda Tong. Thank Hi everyone, um, again, my name is Linda Tong and thanks so much for that introduction. I uh, just wanna say thank you and congratulations to Phoenix, the curriculum consultants, um, all the project presenters and partners and the program participants for really coming together and make this happen. Um, I'm so excited to hear how the rest of this event goes. Um, and my, uh, my colleague, our deputy program manager, Jessica Davenport, is also here from the San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority. And I'll just say that um, we at the Restoration Authority, we're so excited to um, have a chance to support this project. Um, for us, it's um, such a new way uh, for us to support community residents um, in learning about and engaging in and potentially leading um, shoreline restoration projects that really will be affecting them. Um, it's um, really exciting that uh, we've been able to support um, and facilitate some partnerships and collaborations between agencies and organizations that have been typically involved in restoration projects and really make those connections with residents um, living in Oakland and uh, really community uh, champions. So it's just been a wonderful learning process for us uh, to be working with the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, um, learning how to really work with community-based organizations and trying to elevate um, resident voices and ideas. Um, so yeah, I just wanna say we're so excited to be um, hearing the rest of these um, presentations today. And um, yeah, good luck to you all and um, very excited. Hey. Hey, thank you, Linda. Appreciate all the work from the jump, from planning meetings to being on site and helping. Appreciate you. So we're gonna go a little bit out of uh, agenda into Ms. Margaret Gordon. Oh, she just got here? Yeah, so Ms. Margaret Gordon, we, of course we can wait for Ms. Margaret, Ms. Margaret Gordon, you feel me? In the meantime, anybody wanna jump up and introduce themselves and shout out who in the room? What's up with it? How y'all doing? I'm gonna pick on people, starting over here. Anybody from this table wanna jump up and introduce yourself? Hey, thank you. Hey, 
Hey, thank you, Mr. Professor from the PCP. Thank you. Next table over. Anyone want to jump up and introduce themselves? I just wave. You're not feeling it? <laughs> A thumbs up. We're going to keep on going to the tables. How are you doing? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, hey. Olu. Oh. Shout out to Olu. Oh. Is Margaret almost ready? Can we get one more person? Can we introduce yourself on the left side of the room? Anybody? Throw a hand up. Nobody? Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you, Ashley. Thanks for coming to support Shy. Shout out to Shy as well. All right, so it seems like we're just about ready. You know, Ms. Margaret Gordon doesn't need an introduction, but we're gonna go ahead and give her one anyway. Ms. Margaret Gordon, co-founder and co-director of the West Oakland Environment, Environmental Indicators Project, has been collaborating with neighborhood organizations, physicians, researchers, and public officials to ensure West Oakland residents enjoy a clean environment. Since 1998, through research, data collection, and analysis, a body of community-based participatory research has led to safer jobs, schools, and homes. Gordon's expertise has earned her roles in a number of local and state advisory boards and steering committees, including the California Environmental Health Tracking Projects, Alameda County Pilot Project, the West Oakland Project Area Committee, and the Bay Area Quality Management District's Community Air Risk Evaluation Program. She also served on the Port of Oakland Commission for five years and co-chaired the planning. Shout out to Ms. Margaret Gordon. I learned a lot from her for myself. And I am very honored to introduce you today. Let me get the presentation up. And running. Give me one second. Hello, everyone. Sorry about the delay of being late, but the old lady just can't move but as fast as she used to. Even with tennis shoes on, still can't move that fast. <laughs> yes. You all set? Yeah. And she can use this first card? Uh, can use that. Oh, you got to use this. Or you can use the keyboard. All right. So what you guys get ready to um, see on this PowerPoint is that um, we did a, a, got a um, complex analysis from some UC Berkeley students before it was really, uh, people started understanding about sea level rise. This goes back to uh, 1914, uh, 2014, when we first did this with a set of students at UC Berkeley. And part of our process, we always ask the question when we get people to go back and do the research. So this is like a template for many communities to identify demographics, geographics, uh, economics, um, and determine what is the need for the community when sea level rise. So as you see, uh, it is, uh, there's gonna be a lot here, and I, I'm not gonna go through a lot of the preliminary things because everybody knows it's the uh, ice in um, Alaska and ice and milk, we're gonna have a flood. So I'm just gonna try to keep this quick, precise, and to the point, all right? So you see, that you know, some of this you already know, and if you don't know, you're gonna know right now. <laughs> All right, so, so this is uh, how West Oakland has changed over the years from being a very accessible shoreline for the lonely Indians back in the day, and then for the settlers who came in and as you can see, much of it has been filled in over the years. But also we have an example. If, if the sea level rise plus, if the ground rock of water rise simultaneously, this is what West Oakland is going to look like. Such as West Oakland will look like. All right. These are our, some of our demographics. Who is most affected? Who will be most affected is those who are renters, who don't have uh, disposable cash, who will uh, be, waiting for, be waiting for somebody to rescue them in the next 
for the next 32 to 72 hours. Um, we also put in um, who are the homeowners and who are not, the poverty level. And also you see this uh, change about who the African-American community is at 48. 48% and now it's about 28%. So you see the sea level has effect uh, uh, in many different ways. Uh, it can affect from uh, just uh, including the environmental, uh, environmental community of air, water, and soil. But the most important part that will affect is that if you have topsoil, that has already been contaminated with multiple levels of, of toxics. That is the most important thing that will create more harm because the mixture of that, you're going to, you're going to eventually, you'll be driving through it, you're going to walk through it, you're going to be, uh, and if you don't be careful, you'll be tracked into your house. So we have to be, so one of the things that has to be, how do we start cleaning up, cleaning up these, uh, toxic soil needs in West Open. And also the other human impact would be trucks falling over, trains falling over, those liquids will also be uh, mixed in with the water table. So we have so we have to be very more conscious of just some baseline information. We have to have an in-depth analysis of what's happening in each and every community. So that's why I keep calling this a, a template. You have to be able to describe your impacts and vulnerabilities based on what's happening in your neighborhood. So this is a picture of back on this way at uh, Jack London Square. So, so you also see if the, the flood will come up, this is how that community will look and who will, uh, how they will be affected for the sea level impacts from uh, have not, not been have the ability to uh, get to the grocery store just like we will, but it still is a community that has the more disposable cash and, and transportation to get to and from where they need to for uh, to be able to sustain themselves uh, as, as there is a sea level uh, rise. This is West Oakland. This is at the corner of 7th and Mandela the bar station across the street. So you can identify that little area that we have a different way to identify that little area. What would be the impacts of how many people, who would income they have, what what resources will be available for them? Will AC transit be available for uh, uh, for, uh, for us? So it's the same thing. Who who will have the accessibility for resources in case of disaster? So this is a new building that they, they've been working on uh, at the end of Willow Street. And there's new houses. This is not the, at the same thing that's happening right now. I think they, they changed their building, but it's the same thing. Who is going to be impacted? It's all about who's going to be in, in, impacted, how much resilience you're going to have, and what are the in between give us uh, vulnerabilities that's going to happen to you in doing this level rise. So this is how West Oak has been resilient for over the years. You know, we had the Black Panthers who came in and uh, demonstrated about police, police brutality and poverty. Uh, we have had Cypress Freeway fell and we were able to reroute it out the neighborhood. Uh, at that time, it was good. We found out later on that it gave complications to the community. We also have had the uh, issue of having West Oak environmental indicators being developed to identify air, water, soil, and also making a port a target because of the trains, ships, and trucks that come through, uh, come through and impact a West Oak because of the visa particulars that come through. So this is a, a slide of what other cities are doing. Uh, more, more intimate for myself is that I've been to Rotterdam Port. And one of the things that I, I find out 
everybody know about the windmills. The windmills also as a, a apparatus that pumps water. We don't have things like pumping water as a, uh, we have things that pump water, but not on the scale that they have in Rotterdam. Therefore, it's totally, totally away from people. No residential of any kind of ownership, rentals, anything is up next to this port. This port is totally isolated from people. And that they have insurance, a lot of different kind of innovations. You can see at the bottom here that uh, like parking ground, uh, water supply places underneath the ground uh, with uh, um, different type of structures being applied. Uh, so I find that what they've been doing in Europe around sea level, uh, around flooding is very innovative and been, uh, has not been a use that should be applied to to the United States. So here are some of the strategies. And if you see there's a multiple level of stuff of being reactive and being, being a pro, having pro strategic planning. Like this, uh, the shoreline class is a pre emphasis on preparing you know, how to understand the really proactive and strategies. So that's the end of it. All right, thank you. We have time for Q&A. Thank you. Do we have time for Q&A? No time for Q&A. Okay. All right, thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. No more round of applause for Ms. Margaret Gordon. Thank you for that context and always keeping it real. We're about to jump into the participant presentations. Hey.